Hey beer brewers and beer drinkers, I'm Dave and I'm here today to brew for you a Dogfish Head 90 minute IPA clone that I got off the internet. Um, what I'm doing today is a um, all grain brew, uh, it's the first time I'm doing that. Uh, I used to use dry malt extract combined with some grains but this time I'm going to go with an all grain approach to see how it turns out so you're the first to, to view it as I am to brew it. So what I have here is my setup. Right here I have a pot of water that I'm bringing to 170 degrees. There's five gallons of water in this. I'm going to be using that in my mash tun, which is this orange container back here. I'm going to be placing my grains that I got milled at the shop that I get my grains at in that orange container for about an hour. And what that typically does is it breaks down the grain starches into fermentable sugars which later on that's what the yeast eats to create your alcohol. Uh, a couple important things here um, in the back here in this white container is my sanitizing bucket. I sanitize everything as you should too. Anything that comes in contact with your wort or your beer and during the process can potentially contaminate it so it's important just to keep your equipment as clean as possible. Now I'm brewing outside and um, I had to move my setup over because it was under a tree and I was afraid the leaves would fall into it because it is fall and I don't want any leaves or acorns falling into my beer. So uh, I'll be back shortly. I'm bringing this up to 170 degrees and it's about at 130 right now. So uh, we'll pick it up uh, when I get back. See you in bed. Okay, so my temperature over here in my kettle reached 170 degrees. So what I did is I put it into my mash tun here with all my grains. Uh, I have quite a bit of grains here. I have close to 18 pounds in total. So um, it works out to be about a quart and a cup per pound of grain, which is why I chose about five gallons. So it's a rough, it's a rough estimate. So um, the last part of the grain that I'm adding is my uh, amber malt. Now this came as a pale malt uh, so what I had to do is I had to grind it up into these fine little bits. Um, I actually had to roast these because the recipe calls for a brown malt. Since it's pale I had to roast it. Um, you can look up the ingredients or the process online. So anyway I have about uh, 1.6 pounds of this, so I'm adding this as my final set of grains to my mash. So I'm going to mix that in. Murphy, stand back by. I'm going to mix that in. You want to make sure you use a stick and incorporate it into uh, your, your water here because you don't want any air pockets. Now what's going to happen now is the temperature should have cooled down to about 150 degrees. Uh, and at this point, uh, there's two steps that occur. I only go with one. Um, it's called a protein rest and a sacrification rest. Uh, I'm not doing a protein rest because apparently that's done more for lagers and this is an ale. So I'm just going to do a sacrification rest. Uh, what's going to happen now is called the sacrification rest. That is where the starches break down uh, into the uh, fermentable sugars which will be later used by the yeast to create your alcohol. So this now needs to sit for about an hour. Uh, it's insulated so we need to stay at about 150 degrees uh, and then once we do that we'll begin the next step which is um, sparging. So we'll be back for that. Okay so I moved my mash tun uh, from one spot to this setup here, which is where I'm going to do my sparging. Uh, as you can see at the top, I have uh, a cooler that's trickling in 170 degree water into my mash tun right here. I have a little apparatus that I made that's spraying the water on top, and down the bottom here is where I'm going to take out uh, the, the, the hot liquor, it's called. Um, that's the processed uh, water that has been sitting in the grains for probably about an hour and a half. I went a little bit longer than an hour just because uh, I didn't feel it was ready yet. So I'm going to take a sample here. And as you can see, it's, it looks 
you know, beer-like. I expected it to look a little bit darker than this, so I don't know if I should let it go longer. I let it go about 30 minutes longer than I needed to. So I'm going to continue on with recirculating this back into my, uh, what's now called a louder ton, um, to uh, circulate uh, the sediment out. Uh, and then I'm going to start collecting my uh, hot liquor into my kettle here, which will be called wort, and then I will boil that. So um, what I typically do now is just pour this back in the top gently. Now as this is continuing in, I'm just draining some off the bottom here at about the same rate as it's going in. And that's to catch all the husks and the sediment that's in the bottom here. And then I pour this on top of my grain bed. Now once this starts to become a little more clear or I get some clarity, I can stop doing this and then just let the water from the top come down through and I can collect it on the bottom. Now it still looks a little cloudy here, so I'm going to continue to circulate this through. You want to be careful to not pour the water in too, too hard because that's going to disrupt the grain bed which is on the top. You don't want to do that. You want to gently trickle water in. And I can see now that it's starting to clear up, which is, which is good. Now, the uh, important thing about the louder tun here is it has a false bottom, which basically means there's a screen here that catches the grains from clogging up and coming through. So it acts as if it were a filter. So I'm going to continue to do this, run this water through, collect all this hot liquor into my hot liquor tank, which is the kettle I use to boil in, and then we'll be on to the part where we boil the wort. So we'll be back. Okay, I wanted to show this to you because I think it uh, illustrates how this works. So here's my hot water at 170 degrees coming down into this little sprayer here, which is spraying on top of the grain bed. Now, I'm trying to get that to come out at the same rate that this down here is pouring out of my louder ton. Um, you'll see some bubbles catching up there. It might, get, it might be getting a little clogged back in there. But anyway, right here is um, my wart now. And as you can see, it's dark in color. A little bit darker than it was before, so that's a good sign. I also noticed that when it dried on my fingers, it was really sticky. So... Um, I guess that's telling me there's some sugars in there, so that's a good sign. So anyway, I'm going to let this run through. I want to get to a little over five gallons, probably around six, because of evaporation. Uh, I want to make sure that I have enough wort left uh, as I start adding my hops, because I'll be boiling this for 90 minutes, so I need to make sure I have enough in there. Anyway, I just thought I'd uh, show that to you, so um, when this is all done, I will uh, resume the, uh, this little uh, video. Okay, uh, we're just about finished here. All the hot water up here is now gone. It has all went into my louder ton here, and it's filtering down through into this bottom filter into my hot liquor tank right down here. Now this is my wart. Um, I guess it's called the wart. Someone can correct me. Anyway, uh, I'm going to begin to boil this. I have about close to six gallons in here. I'm going to try and get a little bit more out of this. Let it run for a while longer. As you can see, it's definitely darker now than it was when I showed you in that glass. But uh, it's looking pretty good. Uh, temperature's at a little under 140 degrees, so um, it was about 150 in here, uh, so it's dropped a little bit. Uh, of course, I'm outside. So uh, the next step would be to boil this, and once I start boiling, start adding my hops. Um, so check back then. Okay, uh, things are looking really good. Um, the, uh, the wort is ready to go, and we're boiling it right now. It's not quite there yet. 
it's at 140 degrees, it needs to get to 212 degrees Fahrenheit to boil. Uh, but it looks really good. It's a nice dark color, not too dark, but um, what I expected compared to the first sample that I took. And the filter here shows very little sediment. See that? So it's pretty good, pretty well filtered, which I'm uh, was a little worried about, so it's really clear. There aren't any husks in here. Um, from what I understand, if you have a lot of husks in your wort and you boil it, it will give uh, some off flavors or undesirable flavors. So that's good. So it's really clear. Um, so it's it's cranking away right now, and uh, it's just a wait right now until it gets to that boiling point. Once it gets there, that's when we start adding our hops. And um, the hop schedule is a little different for this 90 minute IPA. Uh, it's a 90 minute boil, which stands for, that's the 90 minutes. Uh, so you, uh, you add hops uh, in a different fashion. It's can, called continually hopped, which means we're gonna add hops at specific intervals um, along the way. So um, when this gets boiling, um, I'll get back and we'll, we'll go on to the next step. Okay, uh, I'm still waiting for my wort to boil. It's taking a lot longer than I expected. It's at 180 degrees now, so I put the lid on to speed it up. But I uh, thought I'd just tell you what the uh, hops are that are going into this. Uh, again, this is the uh, Dogfish Head 90-minute um, IPA. Uh, it uses three different hops. Um, the one on the left here is the Amarillo. That's uh, two ounces there. In the middle is the Simcoe hops. Uh, three quarters of an ounce there. And on the right here is the Warrior hops. And that's a half an ounce. So what this recipe calls for is um, what's called a continuous hopping or a continuous hop schedule. Typically you have hops in three distinct, root, three distinct groups. Uh, the first one is the bittering hop addition. Uh, and then the next one is the um, um, flavor addition. And then the last, at the end of the boil, or towards the end of the boil, is the um, aromatic addition. That's the one that you, you tend to smell. The longer the hops are in the boil, the more bitter it will be, which is why you put the bittering in first. So what we're going to do here is we're going to mix these two, three together. Put the Simico in there. And then the warrior. We're going to mix these up. And what we're going to do is add these over the course of the next 90 minutes. We're going to add a quarter ounce of this hot mixture, mixture into the wort every 8 minutes, which will be 11 hop additions. So I'm going to be here a while. So I'm not going anywhere. So anyway, uh, when this thing uh, boils over here, um, we'll start adding these hops in. Um, one thing to keep in mind is as you approach the boiling point of your wort, you want to be aware that you could have boil overs. As you see now, there's a uh, foam layer starting to appear that wasn't there before. So as this hits the boiling point, uh, 212 degrees Fahrenheit, um, you're going to see um, bubbles pop up um, and what may result is in that is a boil over. So you just got to keep an eye on that, regulate your temperature. Anyway, um, enough of me talking. We'll see you in a few minutes.